I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is July 12, 2018, and in this video I'll be going over the custom design carabiner I ordered from DDF3D.com. Okay, so what I've got going on here is this uh, this thing on Thingiverse happens to be thing 1819242 is a custom carabiner by DDF3D.com, and it's one of my favorite things to print out and give away. Um, now because it's just neat to watch and how it works and it's just a really good design. It's just really interesting. And it's also something easy to hand out. Um, now what I've been doing lately is I'm on a mission. We homeschool our kids and also we deal with a lot of other homeschoolers and having done some 3D printing for a while, I'm convinced that every single homeschooler needs a 3D printer for a multitude of reasons. So I'm trying to figure out ways to pull them in, to encourage them, to show them what this can do. And one of the ways is just to kind of give out some trinkets. And I keep trying to find different things that are alluring and neat and interesting and kind of give you an idea of what things can do. And one of the best ones I've found is this carabiner. So recently I was held at a homeschool conference, one of the first ones I've ever been to, and I helped someone work a 3D printing booth. And so what I did is I actually printed up about a couple hundred of these carabiners and just hand them out. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about them is it led to a little bit of confusion because it has uh, the DDF3D.com on it, which is perfectly fine. Hey, great. I need to promote them. They do a great job. But people walked away and I gave them some literature and whatnot, but now they're, they're confused on am I associated with these people? Or are they different? What's going on? So I decided, you know, um, these guys actually do custom design work. So if you actually go to their website, they have a lot of, you can actually shop for their digital goods. And you can actually buy some of these 3, 3D designs um, so that you can actually, if you want to print and sell them, I guess you could, if you buy the designs and do that. But I don't want to sell them. I just want to give them away. And I would like to have my logo on them or something like that or something to indicate what I'm doing. So you can actually go here and you can go to their shop and you can go design for you. And this is what I did recently. And you can actually get it customized. They'll do a custom design for you. And what I chose to do is I, I really like the, the one that I just showed you. I like this design. And there's a lot of space to put a logo or different things on there. Um, and so it may seem a little crazy at this point, but it's it's in my mind, it's well worth the money for what I'm doing. So it cost me $150 for the whole thing. So I, I gave them $150. I started communicating with them back and forth. And I believe they are in Taiwan. I might be wrong about that. There was a little bit of a language barrier, but we got through it pretty quickly. And so for me, initiating the order, we're actually committed and paid for it, was on June 17th. And pretty quickly after there, on June 21st, they actually sent me a couple of design choices, you know, A or B, choose one. And they were both pretty good. So I chose one and they got me the whole thing done by July, July 6th. So in total, it was 19 days, a little less than three weeks to go from order to complete. And now I have this cool custom carabiner that has... You know, a little, I don't know if I can show it. I have a good light here. It has IQList.com on it. And it has a little IQList.com up there. I'm not sure if you're going to show very well. Uh, but anyway, and also they made a little logo for me. It's not exactly my logo that I haven't been using, but it, uh, eh, it works. All right, there we go. So I am just really stoked because I'm going to print a bunch of these out and give them away. Um, and anyone who wants some custom carabiners for the same reason, $150, it's a little bit for a design, but it's it's custom work. And so, you know, they deserve the money they're getting. So for me, not the most biggest bargain in the world, but because I really want to promote it, I want to put my money where my mouth, my mouth is. And so that's why I'm doing this. So I've got a custom design. I'm really happy about it. Uh, and so next, I actually want to, I've already printed a couple out, but one thing I want to do just to kind of show it off, I did this with their design. I printed a giant carabiner, 275% size. So my daughter's been requesting one for herself. I made one for my son. I haven't made one for my daughter yet. So my daughter wants one. So I'm going to go print one now and get that set up. Okay, so let me get this uh, going here. So let me go bring in my Prusa Control and actually bring in the design they sent me, which has been pretty cool. So I'm going to make a giant, giant guy. So there it is. And I'm just, I'm really happy with what they've done. So I'm going to, 275% is about as big as I can go. 
and I have to tweak the angles on it to get it just right. So it'll actually fit on the bed. It barely fits if I'm careful about it. Ah, oh, this is gonna be, it's been a while since I've done this. Gotta make sure it fits and there's just enough space for everyone to be happy. Just pushes, pushes it to the edge, right? Oh man, that's just, I've done this before, I'm just close, but it works. Okay, we're gonna go with that. Okay, let me drop the, uh, the door in. There we go, they call it the door. And make that 275% again. I like to print them both at the same time. Start to rotate that guy. These are just so monstrous, monstrously huge, but they're, they're neat. Okay. Oh, that's, that's going to be cool if it works. Okay. So there we go. Um, I don't want optimal. I want fast. And since it's bigger, I want it to be a little stronger. So last time I did this, I did a 50% infill, I believe. So it's a little denser, but it should be pretty strong. Okay. So there we go. So let me generate this guy up. There we go. So it looks like it's well on the bed there. Pretty dense. There we go. So let me go save this G code off and we'll see how well it works. So IQS, IQS 275%. This is going to be cool. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm just happy. I'm happy someone made this for me. Okay, cool. So let me go print this out and we'll see how, see how well it goes. Okay. This has turned into the cursed print. So I was really excited to get this uh, pink filament. So I got this pink filament from Prusa. So far in my 3D printing lifespan, I've only used, I've only had uh, three different kinds of filament. I've had Inland, which is I think from eSun, which is just happens to be purchased at a local micro center. Cheaper stuff, works fine, can't complain. It does bind from time to time, it's not perfect. Uh, but overall, pretty good. Um, and then I've also gotten uh, Hatchbox from Amazon.com. I've been pretty happy with that. And then also I have the original Prusa that I got with my, my 3D printer, but I didn't have much good reference for it because when I first put my 3D printer together from Prusa, I put it together wrong. And so my prints, they worked, but there were some issues. And so I never really got to test that uh, silver out. It worked okay, uh, but I didn't give it a good assessment because I didn't have my printer together correctly. Um, but looking at how they did it, they look like they do a really good job. So I'm a little bewildered. The pink filament I got from Prusa, which I love the color. It looks awesome. And this is, I bought it probably about a month ago, but I left it sealed. So I was waiting for this opportunity to unseal it. So I unsealed it totally fresh. And as far as every other filament I've gotten, um, when it's fresh, I've never had an issue. If it's just, you know, open it out of the box, starts to print, life is good, perfect. Except for this one. This is the first time I've had something just totally fresh and be weird. And I'm not sure what's going on. So I, th what, what, what was occurring is it would print. And all of a sudden I could hear a little bit of hesitation, like it was snagged or something. Um, but then I saw it, it wasn't pushing through. And so I paused the print, you know, refit, put it back in there, got it going again, but then it kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And so I had a bunch of failures on that and I kept, I figured, okay, I'll just fight with it. I'll just keep monitoring it. Um, and so it did fairly well, but I kept having to, you know, swap it out. But then eventually I had to go leave it alone for a while and I got above and just, you know, basically the print failed. So I'm really bewildered what occurred because um, I really like this pink color. So I need to go do some more tests on this filament. And maybe there was something, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just bewildered because it's a brand new filament. So I'm going to go figure that out later on and see, do I have some weird filament? My only total guess 
is that maybe the filament width is not consistent. And so maybe in some sections it got thin and couldn't grab and push it down. But that's a guess because I've never had this occur. The only time I've had things like this occur is when the filament is getting older and getting too much water in it. Uh, you know, I say hydro hydrolysis, but that's not the right word. Uh, where all of a sudden it, it uh, has to also heat up the water. But this is a brand new filament, so I'm really confused. So I need to go find out what's going on. But still cursed, so I went to use, I had a backup pink, which was, uh, this was an inland, yeah, inland. Not as cool looking, just kind of like a, like a blah pink. Um, but so I went to go do this, and then I had it shift in the middle of the night. So it printed just fine, but then I had a shift. I don't know how well it's going to show up here. Uh, you can really probably really see it there so it shifted over and it got done but kind of too hideous to use um could have just been a random freak accident but when you <laughs> i don't know about you but if you have a cursed print it just keeps getting cursed so finally i said okay let me just stop using this uh stop using the file the, the g code file i made let me go make a new g code file and let me separate them so let me do uh, this on one print and this on another print, which is really the better way to go anyway. I just kind of like to get it on one print just for video purposes, but I really should have separated them. So I finally separated them, did a blue color, and finally had it successful. So there it is. It looks really good. I'm really happy with the results. Um, so, so is my daughter, but boy, I'd like to get this cool looking paint working because it just looks, I like, I like the color. But I got it to work. Just cursed, cursed. But um, but overall work. So I'll, before I go any further, let me go through the numbers. So I do have a, a stop motion that I made. Uh, I, I did record making the one that failed. So you can kind of watch as it fails as I talk about this. So the overall one, I re did record uh, how long it took the the, uh, the second pink to, to run and how much it cost. So on the second one, doing both in the same print, it took 18 hours and 21 minutes. It took 15 cents of electricity, and it also weighs 0.244 kilograms. And based on a $20 per kilogram roll, that comes to $4.88 worth of filament to print this out. And then you add in the electric electricity cost, it comes out to $5.03. So overall, about five bucks to print, which is pretty cool for something this big. Now, I did make an accident on this. Um, when I went to go do this piece, rather than doing 50% infill, I did 20% infill, and it turns out it's more than fine. So I think I might go back and redo this big one and do 20% infill, because that I don't think it needs to be 50%, which would make it a little bit lighter. Um, but overall, I'm really happy. I'm, I think a giant carabiner looks kind of fun, but I'm really happy that I have some carabiners to come, that I can pass out now that I have a logo on. So I can tr try to attract some more of these um, homeschoolers, to hopefully into psych, and hopefully kind of keep going down that line. So I, I'm happy. $150, worth it for the design time. Um, I'll, worth it, totally worth it to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. So anyway, just wanted to share all that and show all that off. So there's the end of this video. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we were doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.